you know, one of the things that uh, I want to be able to bring up. So I had a great interview with, um, I thought it was great, with Jay King. He was the... It was uh, a great interview. He, yeah, he founded, um, he founded Club Nouveau. Club Nouveau, he, Time, he, he, um, Time Club, Social Club. Uh, well, he 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 they he met with the guys and he helped oh, yeah. reproduce their album, their, their single. Oh yeah, I remember and, the story. And, and yeah, and, and he signed them. He also um, was the one who gave us Danny and Tommy, who discovered in Vogue and and Tony Tony Tony. He, they were under his camp, um, mm-hmm. and also Brian Alexander Morgan was signed to him, and um, he got him. Wow, his he's given us a lot. Him. Yes, so he's and you know you know help. Re- relaunched the Seattle music scene. One of the things that during the interview, he was very direct. I mean, you know, he spoke very directly about just experiences. You know, he talked about how his dad, um, if somebody, if, his, if a kid came and wanted to fight, fight him. his dad would take him to the na- neighbor and knock on the door and tell your daddy that my son, want, your son wants to fight my son and then let them fight. That he was. So when he asks the the lawyers, the managers for um, some function, hey, I need to, I want us to set up a label. They said, no, you can't do that. And he took it as racism, and he took it as you you don't tell me what I can and can't do because I've right. learned to fight. So he was very, I was very inspired. We need by more listening. people like that. Yeah, <laughs> in my he, opinion, he, you know, but inspired no, by him. But the other thing he did talk about was. You know, I talked about, well, look at how our music has somewhat suffered because of our outlets. You know, Bob Jones selling, um, Johnson, sorry, um, selling BET to Viacon, how that now has affected the quality of music and other stations have been sold off to all these big series and stuff. So the outlet for black entertainment and music has now, we, we don't own control it. And as a result, we can't uh, control what comes out. And he says, well, it's a business and it's a price for every business. And if someone right. came and offered me what my business is worth or even more, why do I keep holding on to that's business? And he, he was, he, there was no, it was no, um, it's, it was very interesting hearing his dynamics. Also, when he talked about labels and artists being yeah. lazy, not wanting to market their own stuff. And, you know, if they go to this label, well, that's, you know, they can't own, complain about it. So, but I think it's, it's, we're so used to hearing it from the victim standpoint. Of, yeah. Oh, I didn't know. And, you know, they just bamboozled me. I just didn't know. And, yeah. you know, and I didn't have a lawyer. And I, I, what was I supposed to do? We're <laughs> always hearing from the victim standpoint. And I think it was a little abrasive for some people. A little, it just kind of took them aback yeah. to experience that. But, you know, I, this, is, this is the thing. Um, and there's this old quote. Um, I, I want to say it's something about truth. It it does two things. It repels and it draws you near. So sometimes truth is is just too, it's sometimes the truth can be so potent. It's just like oh, I don't like the way that sounds. Yeah. And we don't we just don't like it. And I think that this person, um, Jay King, which I did, I enjoyed that. I think that that interview is the, one of the most helpful for anyone aspiring to get in the music is business he speaks like a lot of the mentors i had when i started um in the early 2000s with the music industry and i I try to surround my people myself with people that were um knowledgeable and that have kind of been through things and sometimes they will you know you know like i said they will come off a little harsh but we need that sometimes i think the people you know as i could tell some people were kind of you know just not feeling that energy. I think he kind of came off like a Republican or something. Like he just, <laughs> I think we're like, are you going to tell us to pull up, pull ourselves up by the bootstraps or something? No. But he was kind of having some, some criticisms about the black community when it comes to entrepreneurship and, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and, and making us take ownership over certain things. And I think whenever you take that direction, it's going to repel, it's going to, you know, it's going to ruffle some feathers. People are going to feel some kind of way about that. Um, and I think we have, the people that have the knowledge, we have to be very mindful of how we deliver knowledge. Um, what may have worked for you, because I can accept, like, when people tell me, when people give me advice or things, I can take it harsh. And because I'm getting the information I need and I can just leave all the other stuff to the side. Whereas some people... I don't know their background. I don't know what households they've ra- they've been raised in. I don't know. Yeah. But some people they need more of 
they need a little bit more sugar with that information. So um, I think what J. King represents is what an aggressive winner looks like. And I, I, these are the these are this is the face behind some of your most successful people. Mm -hmm. And um, he's had clear. I didn't know he was involved with Vanilla, Vanilla Ice's project. I didn't know yeah. that he brought us. Um, he did some stuff with Madonna. He did stuff with Madonna. Right. He said, you know, four tracks of Vanilla's biggest album. He did four tracks on that big album. So he's right. Um, and he wasn't a singer. And he wasn't a producer, but he successfully had success. Like he produced that song, and he—I think he said he didn't. He wasn't even really a producer at that time. He yeah, when, when Terrence dabbled. came out with rumors, and but he just thought, how to, how can he just sound different? You know, he, but he, he, um, and he, you know, he talked. You know, he, he talks in in about the interview about investing, you know, in stock markets and mm -hmm. bitcoins, and he's he's. And he started up in a, in a sort of investment pool, trying to get other people to get involved in investing in, in because the black community are, have the least amounts of investment in the stock market. Mm -hmm. So he's, he, he, he has all his, the stuff he, that all the stuff that people think are is so boring to listen to and they don't want to yeah, hear it. But then but they he, complain why they don't have any money. But he, <laughs> and, why you know, and, and I think he, he, he just comes across as somebody who's worked hard and he believes in hard yeah. work. He just believes in it. And and it really, you know, what what he his interview reminds me of when I put out the the five met the six mental health awareness uh, interviews. Yeah. Less than 200 people watch each episode. Um, almost as if, well, we this is too much. Let's let's leave. And so. And, and you know, I, I, it, everyone in, at their own time can watch and feel the, what, what what they want right. to watch, which is fine. But it's it's the kind of stuff that I do wonder, um, or maybe someone could say, look, if we want to be an, if you want to be educated, we'll go to um, you know uh, PBS, uh, but we want right, to be entertained, right. so we've we've come here and stuff. But, um, and that's the balance here. Like we're doing interviews, we're doing you know we're we're providing entertainment. But sometimes you got to slip in a little information and yeah. stuff like that. Because, you know, yeah. it's we're just, you know, when you're dealing with music, music is largely an entertainment, you know, medium. Yeah. And um, people claim that they want to know how the sausage is made, but they don't. They just mm. want the sausage and they, they like the taste of the sausage. They don't want to <laughs> know that actually in that sausage is not 100% beef. It's yeah. other thing. They don't want to know all that. So, you know, sometimes you just give them the entertainment and that's what works. It's worked time and time again. And that's why we have so many successful business people that understand marketing and they know what the people want. And whenever you get a peek behind that door, all of a sudden there's outrage. But this has always been there. So, okay, his attitude is very cut and dry. He's a straight shooter. Yeah. But uh, for a lot of people, they're like, where's, what about how the people feel? But this is business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, and look at, but look, he had, he had a lot of traumatic experiences too. I mean, he probably was friendly with those guys from Time, Time X yeah. Social Club. And they just turned around and signed another deal up under him after he did the legwork to make that song popular. Yeah. So this is why people become so cold and callous and just say, oh, I'm just about the business now. Because sometimes when you rely on those relationships or those friendships and and things don't go your way or someone, you know, betrays you, you learn very, some people learn quicker than others. Because yeah. I'm one of those people like, you know, let me give them another chance. But <laughs> yeah. some people are like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going there again. I'm not going to get played. Yeah. yeah. And that may have been the, the path. And look, it's, it's led to success. Those guys, you know, God bless them. I hope they're doing something. But this guy has been able to take. He's not a singer. He wasn't a producer when he really started out. And look what he's been able to accomplish. Yeah. So, like I said, that's we need more people like him because I want, especially in, with. In, and I'm not trying to say is, uh, you know, I'm focusing on men versus women, but I think especially males, we need to see more males that are hard workers and go getters and yeah. no nonsense and straight shooters instead of the fluff that's kind of put in front of us these imaginary like people look at the diddy and and uh jay prince and all these it's like a image that's not the real people behind the the walls that are making these decisions those are like uh characters yeah. created for them like these you know they have this gangster lifestyle of 
you know, you know, in, in a music business, like they're just these big shot callers. There's all kinds of people behind Diddy that are more powerful. You know, there are more a whole bunch of people that are behind these other entities that yeah. we see on a daily basis that are put in front of us. But yeah. they're telling us if you act like Diddy, you can be successful. That's not that's <laughs> yeah. not a hundred percent. I mean, true. even even Jay Jay Z. I mean, you know, they you know those who who who, who gave him the opportunity to to run Def Jam, people in in Live Nation who who, who gave him an opportunity right. to bring in a Rock Nation. They knew that if they if they partnered with him, he can bring a certain uh, market to them and open them up and open the revenue. And, you know, they put them as, as a front. So there are, there are people, they don't need to, you know, the most powerful people don't, don't are, are the most hidden people and stuff. And Jay-Z's um, name right now, Jay-Z's name is a marketing tool. If you, yeah. if you align it with Jay-Z, it's going to bring eyes. It's going to be, it's going to bring interest. So a lot of people will put him as the front of, oh, you know, Jay-Z owns, yeah. it's just like Rihanna. Oh, Rihanna, she owns her own makeup line. Like these names are, that's what I meant when we were talking about Chloe and, and Haley or Hallie. Um, certain things, certain artists now or whatever, they're being created and cultivated so they can be influencers for other things. And going back to Jay-Z, Jay-Z didn't make Jay-Z. Dame Dash was a very instrumental, and I won't say, instrumental because we all knew who Dame Jack Damon Jash was. But his personality does not translate. So uh, there's one thing that Damien da Damon Dash has um done is he alienated a lot of people because he's coming out he's come out front now and he's he has a YouTube channel and an Instagram and it's something about his personality that's this is kind of it rubs people the wrong way. That's why I say some people behind the scenes are not always meant for upfront, but Jay Z is. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So I mean, with that, I mean, as I said, I, I hope people will, will take time to just watch the whole Jay King uh, interview when it yeah. comes out next week, and and just see his humble beginnings, how he started off, and and where he's at now. You know, and um, right. You know, just appreciates the the, the man. And check out his music because yeah, yeah um, that's I heard his song. I like that song. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, what's what's what he's coming out with now? And Club Nouveau, they're still the same three people from the eighties. They're them. still together. The three of them are still touring and, and singing together. So no other. You can't talk how many other bands. You know, Loose Ends, all so 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 for real. Uh, so so to so none of them. Their originals are not together. But those those three are still together. So yeah, I have yes. to appreciate Jay King for his time.